At that moment, he sees reality, his vision is clear, and it no longer seduces him. In this week's Torah portion, we read of Joseph being sold into slavery by his brothers and how, in his master Potiphar's house, his charm and charisma propelled him into the important position of chief steward over all his master's house. The Torah goes on to describe how he resisted his master's wife's unwanted sexual advances until ultimately she grew frustrated and had him framed. The Talmud imagines that the temptation was so great that Joseph could barely withstand it, if not for a vision he had of his father Jacob's face reflected in a window pane. This image is what ultimately gave Joseph the power to resist. The Hasidic master Rabbi Menachem Mendel of Vitebsk introduces another Midrash found in the Talmud that imagines Potiphar's wife excessively changing her garments so as to seduce Joseph. The Midrash reads as follows, The clothes that she wore to entice him in the morning, she did not wear to entice him in the evening. The clothes she wore to entice him in the evening, she did not wear to entice him in the morning of the next day. For Rabbi Menachem Mendel, this Midrash is not so much about the characters in the particular biblical story, but rather it's a paradigm for all human struggle to find the divine in a profane world. Our experience of reality, like Potiphar's wife's expansive wardrobe, comes in many guises. It's not just the varied nature of the phenomena in our world, but also the way we perceive such phenomena. Human beings experience many different states of perception and feeling. Rabbi Menachem Mendel points out that in human experience, no two moments are ever actually the same. However, a central Hasidic doctrine is that underlying all this multifariousness is God's single unity, which animates and sustains all of reality in its numerous hues and shades. But how does one get from absolute divine unity to a world of diversity? What transforms singularity into multiplicity. Rabbi Menachem Mendel explains that this is made possible through the process of two divine attributes working in tandem. Chesed, symbolizing divine outpouring of energy, and Gevura, the divine dam that contains, restrains, and constructively channels this outpour. Chesed alone is incapable of producing the world of multiplicity since all would be subsumed in the singular divine. Givura likewise cannot on its own produce anything. It's the combination, the harmonizing of chesed and givura, symbolized by the attribute of tiferet associated with Jacob, that allows for the divine singular to create a world of discernible diversity. This phenomenal world, however, can be extraordinarily seductive. We can easily be tempted to take what we experience at face value, to forget the divine subject in a world of objects, to be seduced by the garment, if you will. Joseph's paradigm is in danger of going down this material reductionist path until in the window, or in his mind's eye, he gets a glimpse of his father Jacob, representing the divine attribute of Tiferet, harmony, reminding him of the continuous delicate balance of divine power upon which our reality is based, and through which it is continually sustained. At that moment, he sees reality for the garment it is, and it no longer seduces him. His vision is clear, and he perceives the divinity that underlies all of reality.